What is up, everybody? You know I always start this show off by showing love to those companies who help make this podcast possible. First and foremost is my friends over at Blue On. You know about my bromance with them. I love what Blue On is, is doing. I love anything that helps better the industry that we all know and love. And Blue On is doing that for sure with all the different resources that they offer. Uh, we all know about the manuals. That's old news. But it's very valuable. Uh, we don't understand how much information some of the tech support calls, uh, different things that can be answered by reading said manual. Um, what they do as far as being able to get parts, being able to find all the different breakdowns for, you know, aftermarket parts, if you can't find the OEM, their tech support, the master mechanic AI, all of it is absolutely amazing. I think it is a tremendous resource for the industry and uh, they're only going to grow. They're only going to grow. And not to mention, I think Blue On does not get enough credit for the community of almost 200 plus thousand technicians uh, that they've grown. If you go on their app, you can ask any kind of question you want. You can post your memes. You can do all that stuff, but they make sure that it is positive. They don't put up with the negativity. And to be honest, it, I love that. I love that they don't do the negativity so that people are, aren't afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to, you know, commute, you know, talk to each other and ask different things or just respond to somebody's question. Like, Hey, I know the answer. That's this, this, and this. It's absolutely amazing what Blue On does. And there's amazing people over there. I know Blue On from the top to the bottom. Mr. Peter, the CEO is one of the nicest, most humblest guys you will ever meet in your life. When you talk to him or you meet him in person, you would never know that the guy's a gazillionaire. Um, but he is just an amazing person, and I love being affiliated with them. Um, if you do not have the Blue On app, download it. Go do that. Uh, I told you about some things that should be dropping here uh, shortly uh, as far as people being able to get tech support that you don't have the choice to be able to decide where you get your your parts from and how you order them um they're going to make that available uh, available as soon as it is i will let everybody know all right with that being said remember blue on upgrading the hvac industry next i'm gonna do three tonight just so you know um i don't even think that it's on the website but guys if you have not checked out yellow jackets new titan max digital manifold uh for one stay tuned on social media because i'm going to be making some videos with it but this manifold is amazing uh it really really is uh, i think that you know they they're putting their self back on the there's my baby there she is this is the titan manifold right here that is a phone that is it's a touch screen that is bigger than you know an iphone uh something like that this thing is built like a tank uh, they thought about comfort. So if you have to hold it, your fingers fit right inside of here. Uh, on the back of it has giant magnets that can stick to a unit as well as they reinvented the hook. And it's built on what I consider uh, the best analog uh, manifold that was ever built. And that is this this one right here, uh, the Titan manifold. Uh, guys, I know a lot of you have already invested into certain manufacturers and certain brands. And I've always told you, I will never tell you where to spend your money. That's not what I do. I never will. I mean, I never have and never will. All I say is if you're looking for something and you're trying to upgrade something or you're buying your first digital manifold is to give them a look. That's all I say. If you don't, if you'd like another one, then by all means, it's your money. Do whatever you want with it. But I really think Yellow Jacket has stepped up to the, the table, and I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. I have had this manifold for probably seven months now. I couldn't tell anybody that I had it. Uh, it was secret because I think me and only a select few had this. And it is awesome. I love it. I've put it to the test, and it's worth every single penny. So, guys, uh, trying to see anything, anything else I missed. Um, 
this is another one I would probably go to, especially uh, as uh, we're going to have the A2L refrigerants coming out, uh, the combustible gas leak detector. So you can use this for natural gas leaks, testing for that, um, as well as checking for A2L refrigerants. So something that you guys should uh, should check out. But remember, 75 years of expertise built into every tool. Last but not least, guys, with the show we have tonight is HVAC Tactical. Guys, you know my wardrobe. Um, I wear this stuff more than I wear anything. The quality is amazing. Um, I love every single thing that I've ever bought from the store. It is worth every penny. Um, and to be honest, the quality is so good, it makes me not want to sell stuff uh, because I want to step my game up. And But that's good uh, because the standard's been set and uh, all the stuff is absolutely amazing. But not even just the, the merchandise, and I won't click into that, is what you're seeing right here is the HVAC Tactical Awards and the movement that has been created um, by Mr. Ben, who's going to be on the show tonight. And this whole thing is absolutely, it's amazing. It's groundbreaking. And I am so honored and humbled to even be a part of it, to be able to attend it, to have won an award, to have presented an award. It is absolutely amazing. And I thank God every day that I've been a part of it. Um, the, we, we've said it before, but it, it is huge and it's only the beginning. And I cannot wait to see where this goes because the blue collar trades are starting to get the recognition they deserve. Um, and it's only going up from here. Remember, I don't even know. We'll ask Ben when he comes on. I don't even know if it's still active. Um, and I don't know how long he's going to keep it. But last time he was on here, if you use the discount code uh, HVAC Uncensored, no spaces, it was 20% discount. Um, guys, if you're going to use that, I would do it ASAP. Um, I don't expect Ben to keep that up forever. So if you're going to get something, go over and do that. All right. Shop HVAC Tactical, buy yourself some gear, support the trade that you love, and support somebody that's trying to raise the game in the industry rather than going to whatever you go and buying an Under Armour shirt or whatever it is. Um, rock HVAC Tactical, support the trade, and it's amazing, amazing stuff. With that being said, let's get on to the show. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States. And thank you to all those men and women who defend it. Welcome to the number one rated HVAC podcast. If you're looking to grow in the HVAC industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue collar people talking about blue collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KV Jr. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr. Here we are, another Wednesday, another hump day, and another amazing show. Uh, first of all, let me say hi to some people that are out there real fast before we get going. Uh, rookie, uh, one of my best friends, my moderator. Thank you, buddy. Mr. Jason Johnson, another brother of mine. Freon Leon, thank you for being here. One of the first people in uh, nasty HVACR. Uh, let's see, Mr. Uh, Puron Parole. I think that's what it is. Yeah. What's up, buddy? I've never seen you in here before, so thank you. Um, Sam Andrew, what is up, Sammy? Let's see, Miss Jessica Egan, how are you doing, my lady? So good to see you. Uh, Mr. Jimmy, what is up, Jim? HVAC teacher, another moderator of mine. Appreciate you guys. East Coast. Um, let's see. BPHC, hello, hello. Yes, maybe I did have some drug dealer time. I apologize. Um, I thought that I was going to be later tonight, so that's on me. Um, I think that I got everyone. If I missed you, I apologize. But guys, another great, guys and gals, I'm sorry, another great show tonight. You know who this person is. He's been on the show several times. Um, I love having him on. Um, so I'm just going to bring him on without further ado, guys. Please 
put your hands together and welcome one of my really good friends. I appreciate this guy more than he knows uh, for what he does and just his friendship. But the founder and uh, mastermind behind HVAC Tactical and the award show, uh, the one and only Mr. Ben Poole. What's up? What's up, brother? Well, you know, just doing it to it. I hear you, man. What's that? Say it again. Just busy being unstoppable. Hey, that's all. That's all you can do. Um, let me turn this screen off. So, l- l- before we talk about any kind of award stuff, I'm curious how has it been for you afterwards? Just like being able to uh, relax a little bit. You know what I mean? Because um, I know it's stressful on you. What's that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I took maybe two or three days. That was pretty much it. Um, I'm right back in the saddle. Uh, we're already planning for Orlando. There's a lot of moving pieces because of Super Bowl. Um, the, the Super Bowl Sunday is the same day of the award show. So that's, we, we thought it was going to be a problem, but we're looking more of it as an opportunity than an actual problem. So, um, but yeah, man, I, I, I got the magazine, the next magazine's coming out April 1st. So, I mean, there's just, it's nonstop. So we're just cranking away. So That's awesome. So how, when you do the magazines, what is it like, um, do you try to do them like uh, quarterly or do you have a set schedule or how are you releasing them? Yeah, this year, uh, we, we were originally going to do quarterly. We decided to do three magazines this year instead of four, uh, simply because the award show and everything, we're already behind schedule if we try to do four magazines. And I didn't want to throttle to push out a fourth magazine and then it be kind of subpar. I would rather just focus on doing three really good quality magazines. So, um, so we discussed it with the team right after, um, right after AHR and we just said, Hey, look, let's just hammer out three magazines this year. Let's commit to that. And so that's what we're doing. So April 1st, August 1st, December 1st, that's the timeline of the release of the magazines. Nice. Well, I've been in the first two, so I'll, I'll take it. Even if it's a little piece, I've been in there. Uh, um, it was funny, uh, talking to the, the, I forget her name. Um, the lady, uh, for Navac, I don't want to describe her as the Oriental lady, but she's Oriental, but she does like all her social media. I forget her name. So I apologize for that, but I've never met her before. They just say Asian. It's not Oriental, but. Oh yeah. Asian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was trying to find a better way to say it. And I picked the wrong one. Her name is E E uh, Y I Y I is how you spell her name. Um, she's the, she's kind of the marketing, uh, mastermind behind Navac and she's an incredible human being. So, yeah, she was very nice. And we were looking at them cause you had, I guess you had like the sweatshirt left there and you had a, a bunch of the magazines and, um, uh, Andrew, AKA HVAC had me talking to her and, uh, she was like, Oh, so you podcast. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm in the magazine. And I showed her and she was she was not impressed. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Oh, okay. Let me just close that back up. Um, yeah, it wasn't very, I didn't think she was very impressed with me when I first met her, but that that's just, she's just very, very quiet. So, um, she takes time to do some research, figure out who you are. And then she realizes, Oh, he's kind of a big deal. So she's a great person. Great person. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, they seem awesome. Um, uh, so when will you actually like start well, before we get on the next one, you as the person who goes behind this, and I know you're going to be a critic and hard on yourself. How do you think the award show went this year? How did it turn out as far as your vision and what actually happened? Um, I mean, how do you think it went? That's what, that's what really matters. Um, I think that everything went pretty decent. There was a handful of things that went sideways that, uh, I didn't anticipate or, you know, we were shooting from the hip on, um, but I think, you know, 95% of it was fine. I, I, you're right. I am my worst critic and I see all the little things and I'm a perfectionist. And, um, if I'm going to do something like, I don't know how to do anything regular, right? It's everything's got to be over the top. It's got to be 110%. Um, so when things don't go as planned, it's like, man, we really dropped the ball on that. And like, how do we, how do we fix that? So that doesn't happen again. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just a handful of things. I don't really want to go into the details of what I think went wrong because everybody will start dissecting it. But I mean, I'm open to, we'll be sending out a survey here real soon, uh, to talk about, you know, just feedback on what could be better and, and what we could do to, 
better facilitate things. And, you know, I mean, like the entry line to get in for, to the show was way better than Atlanta. That's for sure. Um, you know, there wasn't a line going out the door. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we, we, we're learning something new at every show. And even when things go well, it's like, okay, well we could do something better. Right. And so we learn from that. So even, whether things go good or whether things go bad, we still learn from it. So. Well, it, it was, it was an amazing time. It was good. Uh, as always, it, I, I think that the setup, it was a beautiful scenery. Um, obviously in Chicago, it was freezing, but it, it is what it is. Um, you know, coming in, but, and I loved the fact that you did the after party. I was kind of sad to see that not as many people stayed for it as I thought, but it was an amazing time getting to have that time to just chit chat with people, you know, have a few more drinks or whatever it is just to sit there and talk to people. I loved everything about the, uh, after party, but I was kind of surprised not to see some people though. Yeah, honestly, man. I mean, I, there was a lot of people there, but I didn't go around kind of pinpointing who wasn't there. Um, I, I was just, and my anxiety was so high that day. Um, I had a lot going on, a lot on my mind. And, um, you know, I, I, like I said, before the show even happened, like I don't get to enjoy the night like everybody else does. Like there's so many moving parts that I have to make sure are done and, and go off without a hitch. Um, it's challenging to say the least. So, um, I'm hoping for Orlando that I can delegate a lot more um, and that I, I truly can sit back and watch the show and just enjoy the show. Um, but man, it's just, it's stressful, you know, um, especially, especially when, you know, you're dealing with people who are showing up late and, you know, people getting up and walking out or people not showing up. It's like, there's just, there's just so many moving pieces of this whole thing. And uh, people don't understand what it takes to put something like this on. and. Um, no matter the decision we make, we're damned if we do and damned if we don't, right? Somebody's not going to be happy. You can go watch the Emmys or the Grammys or the American Music Awards. Like you get three nominees and then somebody wins and you're like, oh man, that they shouldn't have won. They should, this other person should have won, right? That's, that's going to happen. It just is what it is. Um, but my thing is if you're not contributing, then stop talking. And what I mean by that is don't complain that somebody you wanted to win didn't win if you didn't even go and nominate people, right? So what did you do your part? Did you nominate your buddy? Because if you didn't nominate your buddy, don't be mad at me and the committee that they didn't win. Do your part. Go nominate your buddy, you know? Yeah. So everybody has to do their own part. So um, it's easy to sit back and criticize and point fingers. But quite honestly, dude, you'd crap your pants if you knew what it took to put this whole thing together. So. I, I could only imagine, man. And I mean, it's, it's as the end user, all I can say to you is, you know, it, it's an amazing time. I look forward to it every year, to be honest. I think I look, I look forward to the tactical awards more now than I look forward to HR in general, to be honest with you. Um, and that, that's the truth. Um, so I, it's, it's the perfect kickoff for that, for that whole weekend. Um, so, and, and like I said before, I love it. HR is great seeing the new tools and, you know, the techie stuff and all that kind of stuff. But I go for the relationships, man. I go to see my friends, to meet more people. And that's what I love about it. And that's why this year from doing these so much, I actually learned to dial back my schedule a little bit because I was overdoing it. And um, it's, it's a blast. I, I we we talked about this before, man. It, it's this award show is, or not is, has created a movement that is moving like wildfire. And I am happy for you, and I'm amazed to see where it goes. Um, and I'm fine just buying my ticket and attending, win, pr um, present, do nothing, whatever. As long as I'm there, it's all matters. Yeah, it's uh. I mean, I wish I could buy a ticket to just attend to, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, we'll get through it and, uh, Orlando will be awesome. Uh, just like Chicago was awesome. Just like Atlanta was awesome, but uh, nothing is without its challenges. That's for sure. So, but, um, but man, I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Uh, somebody asked in the chat, if I go to symposium, I've been to symposium one time. Um, it was great. I loved it. 
um, I wasn't able to go, um, wasn't able to go this year. I'm trying to remember why, but, uh, I sent, I sent my helper, I call him my helper. He's my consigliere, uh, Efren Martinez, also known as Puron on parole. He's in the, in the chat in there. I didn't know uh, that was him. Are you yeah. serious? I'm sorry, yeah. Efron. I did not know that was you, brother. I, I feel like a moron now. It's fine. He always comes up with these weird names, Puron on parole. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty funny. I did not know that that was, uh, that was all, him at all. Part of the visionaries. Um, and uh, yeah, he's doing it to it, man. So yeah, there's, I give it to you guys, man. Um, four young dudes, the visionaries doing uh, some pretty cool stuff. I, I love seeing that, especially out of the younger crowd, man. So good for you guys, man. Um, uh, even though I was uh, stoned at an after party at Tertius thing and two of your buddies were talking to me and tell them if I, uh, I'm not sure what I said. So if it was anything bad, I apologize, but I think the conversation went well. Um, <laughs> uh, that was a mistake that I regret, but what are you going to do? Um, how the um the, the that centrotherm thing or whatever looked looked awesome. I've never heard of it or knew any knew anything about it, but it looked amazing. I was like, oh man, I'm jealous. I wish I was there. Oh man, Miami was amazing. Um, so they did it not last year, but the year before. So they skipped a year. Um, and I actually didn't get, get I did not get invited to that one because they didn't know who I was back then. Um, and so. Uh, I was kind of bummed, right? I just saw people were in Miami and I thought, dude, what's going on in Miami? How come I didn't know about this? And then I saw what was happening and like people that I knew were there and I'm like, dude, how come I didn't get an invite, you know? And, um, and it was just really cool. Well then fast forward to where we are now, uh, they extended an invite out and, um, you know, obviously I built a great relationship with central therm. Um, Matthew price works over, he's the one who puts that whole thing together and uh, he's one of the editors for the magazine. Um, they're a sponsor of the award show. So I've built a, over the last couple of years, I've built a pretty good relationship with them. Uh, so I got to go down there and uh, be part of what they were doing. And it was just such a great time, man. There's probably 60, 60 people there uh, from plumbers and HVAC influencers across, you know, multiple social media platforms. And um, man, just what a great time it was. And uh, just, networking and just talking with guys and just sharing the, you know, the same passion that we all, that we all have and, um, getting to know people, people that I hadn't even met, right. People that I don't even follow on social media, but, um, you know, I walk in and people are like, Oh man, you're like, you helped me last year do something. And I'm like, I, I mean, I kind of remember that, but not really. It, it was just really cool. Uh, just the amount of respect that people had for each other, you know, there was a whole lot of drinking going on and nobody was popping off at the mouth. Like we're all just there. It's all one love, you know? And, uh, and I just, I just really enjoy that. So they had a, they had a, or they were doing a tattoos like pipe wrenches and centrotherm tattoos and a uh, can of WD 40. I mean, just crazy stuff. I'm all filled up on this arm. So. Oh yeah. It looks good, dude. Yeah, man, I got a, a whole Maryland thing. So I will, uh, Maryland flag, Oriole bird, uh, podcast, all kind of stuff. So, but you now I got to slow down. Uh, I got to try to pay for this house. <laughs> so everybody out there who's been involved and knew, knew about my house search, um, we got it narrowed down to two houses, um, that I've put offers on. It, it's looking like we're going to get one of them. Um, but, uh, I've been talking to Ben about it. It's still, uh, very nervous, um, you know, doing it, but, uh, it's also exciting cause I want this to be over and, you know, get that chapter moving forward. So it's looking like that could happen soon. And, uh, both of them have some spots where the new studio is going to be. So we'll see. Go Rogan. So yeah, it, it is going. I, um, I actually ordered one of those, uh, uh, signs, the podcast logo, uh, from the company that I think, uh, Jeff got his from and, uh, Adrian. Is it like corn, cornbread signs or something like that? No, it's like, uh, ADF. I'm thinking of something. or something. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. It's not, not cheap, but the quality is good. So I got like the 36 inch round one. Um, I mean, it's like 500 bucks, but I, Everybody says that they're, um, you know, if you're going to buy a sign like that, I'm not going to get some tiny one. You know what I mean? So, 
Um, but they look awesome. So. Yeah, man. Good stuff. I got a couple of neon Navac lights in here. Um, I keep, uh, I keep thinking about buying an HVAC tactical one, but I'm like, eh, I don't need it yet. Maybe when I get the new studio. So. Yeah. You, are you playing, you can, oh, that's right. I forgot about it. New shop I'm building. I'm, I just, it's been slow moving because of AHR and everything else. I mean, I went from AHR to Miami. I came home from Miami for one day, jumped back on a plane, flew to Arizona. And then I just got back. What's today? Wednesday? Yeah. So I got back yesterday. And so today is like my first day, like first day back on the grind and uh, spent most of the day here in the office and, you know, doing this. And so going hard in the paint tomorrow and Friday. And then, uh, yeah, just been go, 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 man. So, yeah, it's try to things up. So I had a meeting with Supco while I was in Phoenix because Josh Cooley lives in Phoenix. And so uh, I went to the Supercross race in Phoenix and I had an extra ticket, told Josh to come with me. So while we were there, we talked shop and got some deals done. And then, uh, yeah, I come home and, you know, talking to other people today. And so... Yeah, it's exciting, man. A lot of a lot of doors opening right now for the brand, and that's all just due to um, you know the momentum coming out of coming out of the show in, in Chicago and just kind of creating a whole lot of noise. And um, you know, if I'm being real honest, it's uh, it's really just the grace of God that's upon my life that's uh, that's causing all of this great things to happen. So, Amen. Um, just grateful for that. Yeah, no, I I hear you, and, and you and you you deserve it, man, and especially for everything that, uh, you know, it, it's the award show happens once a year, but it has a, a bigger impact on that. And, uh, just the whole, like dialing it back to a couple of years ago, like when I first met you in Orlando, what, five, six years ago, five years ago, five years ago. Um, I didn't know anybody on Instagram on TikTok. I, I literally, I podcast it. I was on YouTube um, and my Facebook group. That's before I got shut down. That's a hunger story. Um, but uh, it's making friends. And then also, you know, the introductions that you get to meet other people. And I, I, I love it. Uh, you know, obviously I have a big mouth. That's, that's the reason I podcast. Um, also, you know, my passion for what we do, but <clears throat> I've just loved meeting people and I made it a point this year that obviously I want to see the people that I know and I want to make sure that I meet new people. And obviously I always want to do a better job, but, um, having that platform, we're all, because besides the, the tactical awards, that's the only place to really have all these influencers, these amazing people in one spot to be able to really talk to them because yeah, maybe they're at HR, but everybody's doing their thing. They're doing what they have to do. And it's so big. It's, you can't just assume that you're going to run into them walking around because that's not how it works there. Well, you might, but they're in a hurry and they're not going to have time to stop. Right. So, um, I mean, yeah, the award show definitely is a, is a moment for everybody just to get together. I wish we had a little bit more time at the award show, like just an, even if it was an extra hour, just like to do nothing, just sit around and just talk. You know what I mean? Um, because you get to talking to somebody, dude, before you know it, you're sitting there for an hour and you're like, holy crap, dude, it's already time to go. Like we got to go have dinner now. So there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of missed opportunity for sure. If you get sucked into a conversation and you just lose track of time, but at the, at the AHR, I mean, everybody's on their own agenda, you know, it's, it's like the days of walking around the show and like, just looking at stuff and enjoying AHR is like gone. It's turned into a job you know? Yeah. And, uh, and Tertia's thing was pretty cool. Uh, you know, the influence, um, that was, that was neat because there wasn't that, there wasn't that many people there. Uh, when I say that many people, there's probably what, 40 people there. Yeah. 50. Um, but it wasn't overcrowded and that's what I mean by not a lot of people there. So, uh, as opposed to the award show, like there's just people freaking everywhere. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's almost overwhelming. So, and I'm hesitant to add more people to the show for Orlando, but I feel like, man, there's so many people who want to show up who can't because the show's sold out. Like we just need more seats, you know? So yeah. it's a hard to make for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know the logistics of it like you do, but you know, you almost from the outside looking in, it's almost like the evolution of more people like, 
even if it's 50 people, like 50 more people, like nothing crazy, like almost like has to happen. But I know that's easier said than done though. And like I said, that's the outside looking in. I'm not inside. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's challenging, man. No matter how you shake it out, it's challenging. So we do the best we can. We'll, we'll weigh it out and see if we can fit 350 people in. But I, I always said, you know, for the last couple of years, I don't want to go over 300 people. And now I'm, I feel like I'm being forced to step into 300 people or 350 people. But the only option is, as we tell sponsors, you know, just limit them to certain, because there's some sponsors who'd be like, Hey, can I get three extra tickets or can two extra tickets or whatever? Right. But when you add, when you really add all those numbers up, I mean, how many people is that? Right. That's 20, 30 people that they're bringing extra. Right. And they're buying tickets for them. Yeah. But they're just extra people that aren't contractors. So that's 20 to 30 people that potentially could have been contractors that you, you kind of took their seats, if you will. Right. So uh, you know, just trying to find the balance, man, because, you know, sponsors are paying a lot of money to be part of this and, um, we got to make sure that we deliver value for them. Right. Otherwise they pull the plug. And if they pull the plug, there is no show. Yeah. So yeah. there's a business side to all of it. That people have to, have to realize, and you know, um, it's, it's fun till it's not. <laughs> yeah. So I've enjoyed it though, man. I, I really am. This has been this is crazier and bigger than I ever expected it to be. I'm humbled and flattered by, by the people just wanting to be part of this and, 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 you know, throttling it, man. It doesn't happen without the people, you know, so got to have the people first, then we got to have the sponsors. Uh, so it takes, takes both, um, both sides, if you will, right. Just to make this whole thing happen. So, yeah, I, I love this year. I was happy to see the, the people, that, uh, won the awards, uh, some obvious friends, you know, very deserving. All of them are obviously deserving. So I don't want that to sound the wrong way. Um, you know, but I will say that being able to give Tersh that award meant the world to me. Um, so that was, that, that was awesome. And the funniest thing is, you know, I started saying his name before I opened it. Um, I don't know. I just had a feeling, a little whisper. You know what I mean? And for the record, Ben didn't tell me anything. I, I did not know. I didn't know who won that award. And just as I opened it, before I even looked, I was like, Terry, yes. I was like, thank God, because I don't want to have to apologize to Ben because I said the wrong name. <laughs> I made three years in a row and I uh, finally took it home in the third year. So that was cool. That was good to see. He he he's deserved it, man. He's he's earned it. He's paid he's paved the way and paid the dues. That's for sure. So I am excited to see what happens in Orlando, and you know, see people really ignite the nomination, you know, standpoint. And we're actually turning our three person committee into a seven person committee. So that's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with all that. Hey, we'll try to blow it up, man. I might try to be the first ever two time tactical award winner. You know what I mean? Or no, right? You never know. So you would definitely be a first. <laughs> yeah. It's um, you know, I think it's awesome, you know, uh, Jen getting Lady of the Trade. Um, you know, getting to know Jen and all the stuff that she does. Obviously, she was on the podcast last week, is uh is crazy. I don't know how, you know, she can even do all the stuff that she does. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of people who are deserving of the Lady of the Trade Award, but um, and she just really, she's just kind of doing what nobody else is doing, you know. And um, there's just something to be said for that. And so, you know, again, everybody has their opinion, right? Somebody should have won. This person should have won. Um, but reality is, is we just make the best decision that we possibly can, and we decide on who we think really deserves it the most. And all everybody's deserving of it that who's been nominated, but there only can can, can only be one winner, right? So, um, my my best advice is uh, level up the game and shoot for it again next year, right? And Tersh is a prime example of that, dude. Got nominated three years in a row and took him three years to win, right? But never once have I ever heard Tersh or anybody tell me that Tersh was complaining about it. No. So, so not once. Yeah. Um yeah, no, he that, that that's that's not him. And plus people gotta realize like even to be nominated or see your friends, you know, it, it it's awesome. You know, so it's yeah, we won't worry about, you know, there's always going to be negative stuff to all that stuff. And you can't, 
knows like dude it's a small community right like you if you go grumbling to somebody like it's gonna get back to us like we're gonna know about it we're not only gonna know that somebody was grumbling but we're gonna know who it was and it's just a bad look man just keep your comments to yourself if you have a question reach out to us directly i'd be happy to chat with you about it right I had somebody reach out to me and ask me some questions and uh, I said, I'm happy to talk, happy to talk about it. But um, yeah, you know, running, running your mouth behind the scenes is only, only causes division and we don't need division in the community. We've worked way too hard to build this thing into what it is in the community and how awesome it is. Like we don't need somebody coming in and trying to tear it down from within. No. And, and I had to tell some people and I won't say who I talked to, but you know, people even being nominated for like the the podcast award. And, and it's like, um, it's like, Hey, like it, it, I love seeing all these new shows pop up. It, it's amazing. I encourage it. The more, the merrier. It, it's only going to help the industry that we all love. Um, but think about all the people that have won that award. We've all been podcasting for seven, eight, nine, you know, it's been a long time. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen overnight. Like, so don't, don't get frowned upon if you're like, oh man, I, I didn't win. Like, just, just keep rolling. You know what I mean? Like, just, just keep rolling. Like it's, uh, I'm honored that, that I, I won it. That award is amazing. I'm glad to see, um, you know, the jerks 100% deserving. Those guys do an amazing job. Um, I can't wait for us to do some co-mingling stuff. Um, Tersh 100% deserving. Um, and I, I'm trying it's to think. Kind of, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, dude, you got nominated. That's an honor in itself, right? Yeah. Your peers thought you were good enough to be nominated, right? And and even if you weren't nominated, dude, we still have a show. Like, what was life like in this industry before there was a show? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's kind of reminds me of what was it, Willy Wonka, and it was like. uh 37 presents daddy last year i got 38 oh <laughs> da- you know what i mean it's just like but i want it now daddy it's like dude quit being spoiled little brats man like this is an awesome thing that we're doing like stop catching feelings just celebrate the people who are deserving of the win and take the win and the nominations and let's just keep making this industry better man make new friends learn something from somebody you know like um uh, get a phone number, have that relationship, leave and talk to more people. Um, you know, uh, Gil needs to win best trim beard award. <laughs> you like that dye job though, don't you? Otherwise I think the gray is all, you know what? Um, but <laughs> I tell you one thing that I would love to see that I would totally pay for is, um, I don't know. I guess it's hard because we're all busy in the summer, like HVAC tactical retreat. <laughs> well, it's interesting you say that. So if you ever do it, let me know. I want to be, oh, I'm in. We're, we're talking. We're, we're talking about doing things throughout the year. But the problem is, is a lot of guys just can't break away from work, right? So... So you'll find that the guys who are who are able with the time and the and the resources to be able to do that um, will kind of always be kind of the same guys, right? And so, which I don't have a problem with that, but at the end of the day, like you'll get people who be like, "How come all these things only all the same people always show up? Like this has got to be an invite thing only, right?" And it's like, here we go again with the invite only thing. So it's uh, it's it's difficult, man. Um, I, one of the things I'd really like to do is go, I'd like to put a cruise together and go on a cruise ship, nothing but HVAC dudes. Right. And have like vendors on the ship, you know, NAVAC and Supco and whoever, whoever, right. Viper. Um, it'd just be a really cool opportunity to disappear for three days. Can't go anywhere. You can't go home. Right. You're on a ship in the middle of the ocean. Um, it would just be, it would be a good time. And we could arrange for like tours of the whole mechanical setup of the ship or something like that. Like that would be cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause I, uh, let me know I when you figure it. <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, cause I told you, man, like I'm, I really have some plans to, um, you know, 
as far as uncensored to take it to the uh, next level. But um, I, I, it's one of those things that I can't getting the house is so important. It's such a critical piece that I have to, that has to happen first um, before I can even um, put money anywhere else or do anything else. Um, so I guess that's why my anxiety, you know, gets, gets me so worked up. And then the fact that it's just, you know, the dollar amount, which I've, I've worked my butt off for a long time to be able to do that. But like I told you, it, it still makes me nervous because I'm the leader of my household. And what if I'm making the wrong decision, you know? Um, so it plays on your mind. Yeah, for sure, dude. I, I think you're going to be fine, man. Um, sometimes we overthink things, right? Um, and see, so sometimes you just gotta, you gotta trust in the power that's bigger than you are, man. Yeah. And that's why so I'm trying, uh, I, I keep, uh, talking, but the more I talk to myself, it's the problem, not him. <laughs> that's it, man. Uh, it, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, what, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so when will you actually start the planning for next? Have you already started the planning for Orlando? We started the week after AHR. So, yeah, it's, uh, we're already looking at venues in Orlando or March is pretty stacked for me. So I'll probably end up going to Orlando in April, uh, probably the first part of April to, um, to go scout venues and probably put a deposit down on something. Um, and then I think middle of April, I have a trip scheduled with Zach, uh, out in the Ozarks, uh, like a camping trip. So, um, yeah, I try to do these like little trips. So like March for me is I'm going to Arizona. My daughter's, we're throwing my daughter a quinceanera in Arizona. And then I come back and I go on a, like a three or four day kayak trip down in South Texas. And then, uh, like two days after that, I go to Canada for CMPX. Um, and then I'm back and then, uh, April will end up go probably going to Orlando and then I got that thing with Zach. And so it just, everything just keeps stacking, dude. And so like I have, again, I have magazine deadlines I have to stay on top of, right. I have, um, award show stuff that I have to keep going. It's just, I still have social media content that I'm obligated to create for people. Like, so it's, it's a lot of work for sure. So, so it may seem like I'm always out of town taking vacations. <laughs> um, I, I am, but I'm not like, I'm still working when I'm out of town making content and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, People got to, you know, it, this, you know, don't get me wrong. And I, I love what we do and it's fun, um, you know, but people were like, there's a lot of work involved, you know, there's sacrifice that you make to be able to do this. It's not all just, you know, you know, um, but obviously it's worth it. That's why we do it. The impact you make, the people you help, you know, the lives you get to touch and that's, it, it's rewarding. Um, you know, the emails, you know, I mean, I know you get them people or even meeting people. Oh, you helped me do this or you did that. That's, that's what makes this all worth it. That's more than any dollar or, or sponsor or whatever it is. Yep. And I will say that, you know, right now we're locking a deal down with, uh, with GE and I don't have a problem saying that because I'm, it's, it's like, it's going to happen. It's like 99% done. Um, I just got off the phone again with them today, solidifying some stuff and, uh, you know, they're going to be able to fund, uh, the, in the trenches series that we've been kind of toying with over the last six months. And, um, I don't know, has it been six months, something like that? I mean, we did an episode with you and your guy, Baltimore, I never aired it. Um, and not for any particular reason, I just never did. Right. Um, but yeah, I have a handful of, of episodes that we've just never done. We never put on the air, <clears throat> but GE wants to be a sponsor of that. And so that's going to allow us to really travel around and, and do these videos with people. Um, and so the, the objective here is like, if I came to Baltimore, let's just use that as an example, I would want to try to line up like two or three people and, and really make those videos like with two or three people. Right. And not just go there for one person. That way I can triple my content while I'm there and then come back. And then I'm, you know, one trip, three birds or, uh, three birds, one stone type thing. Right. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I love that whole idea of the series, to be honest, um, because that's what I would love to to do eventually is to be able to not not say travel around and do that, but I would love to be able to travel 
and just um, do other content with other creators to be able to go in their domain, their environment and, you know, just watch them do what they do and to be involved with it. I think that's just awesome. Like I, I really, uh, me and Craig, uh, Migliaccio have been talking, um, to go up there and do a, do a podcast with him and do some stuff. Like I really want to do that. And if I'm in Jersey, I might as well go a little bit further up and see Jeff and Mike, you know what I mean? It's like, so these things can happen. It's just enough of this and actually, actually getting it done. So that's the kind of things that I want to put forward. One of the things that we want to do with Mike and Jeff is film like a five part mini series uh, with each of them. Um, just, you know, on the job, home life, just, you know, kind of like a, kind of like MTV cribs and uh, dirty jobs, right? Like just having this is real raw, like, you know, this is behind what actually happens on Instagram type thing. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things that we want to do. We've obviously just been kind of, pounding the pavement waiting for somebody to fund it. Um, you know, because it costs a lot of money to travel and, you know, stay at places and stuff like that. So I think we got it figured out. So I'm excited to see what this year holds and, um, yeah, man, we're grinding away. So it's a special, special shout out to GE and, uh, also Subco trade Fox, Navac, um, Vito just signed on with Vito. So I'm really excited about that. Me too. Yeah, a lot, of, a handful of people did for sure. They're uh, they're uh, they're heavy handed right now, trying to to bring people on board. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I love I I love the Navac brand. I mean, the Vito brand. Um, I use their products all the time, so it, it was just a natural fit anyway. So yeah, I was talking to to James, uh, the president, and the conversation. I was just honest. I wasn't even talking about sponsorship, and um, I bought a bunch of stuff while I was there. And uh, I told him, I said, you can go back and watch my videos about I've always loved Vito and look at how many bags that I've given away. And I bought all of those with my own money, you know, and I might say, oh, it's from Blue On, it's from so and so, but I buy it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's it's not from them. And uh, and he was like, well, don't do that anymore. He's like, let's change that. I was like, OK, I'm like, yeah, let's do that. So um, I agree. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I, I love uh I know for the longest time, everybody thought that like, you know, as far as sponsor wise, Vito was untouchable. So. Well, Adrian, Adrian had that locked down for quite some time. So uh, yeah. I don't know the scope of all that, but I know that he was, he's been working behind the scenes doing some Vito stuff for a while, but yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. Um, you know, myself, you, I think Zach's on board with Vito. Um, I'm not sure who else they brought on board, but um, yeah, it's really exciting things happening. Um, I love to, you know, make these connections with these companies who are just genuine with genuine people with great products. Um, but I also love to see, you know, my friends, if you will, across social media and people that I've met through social media also be able to, to get linked up with these people as well. So, um, yeah, time will tell, you know, we'll see what happens, but, uh, we're going to be doing some giveaways, um, with between Vito and Subco trade Fox. We're going to give uh, Vito tool bags full of tools. We're going to do some giveaways and, uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. And it, I think we're just going to do this to help keep the momentum of everything going, uh, as we lead into Orlando. But, uh, we're talking about really focusing on like apprentices. Um, uh, so we're going to do like a nominate your apprentice type thing. And, um, and we'll every few months we'll basically raffle off, if you will. Uh, raffle is probably not the best word to use, but do a giveaway for uh, these this veto bag full of tools to uh, to a winning apprentice. So it'd be kind of a cool thing. Yeah, I love that. And like I said, is you know I get it that you know veto bags aren't cheap. You know, especially if you get one of the nice like bigger bags that's a full tool bag, not one of like the MB or TP bags, um, and to be able to give somebody that, that that's amazing. You know, like, um, there's a couple of people they are like, you know, they're like, Gil, I never would have got one of these if you wouldn't have, I wouldn't have won your giveaway or whatever. And I didn't think about it at the time, but then after the fact, I'm like, that's awesome. Because a lot of the people that I've heard that are like naysayers about it, um, a lot of times it's because they just don't have the finances and I get it. It's 300 bucks for a tool bag is, is, uh, cheap, uh, not, not cheap. But one thing I might do that 
I, it's been weighing on me, but I'm trying to not think about myself. Um, I might actually do a giveaway for the tactical book bag that I got only because it's sought after. You only get one of those if you go and I love the bag, but I get to do a lot of awesome things, man. You know, I, I don't want to be selfish. So if I could have somebody else get that, um, I just want to make sure it goes to a good home. You know what I mean? Somebody who would appreciate what they have. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome, dude. Um, the bag, the bags are great, right? Yes, they are. Travel on an airplane with them. Uh, you're, you, you probably won't get it under your seat. That's, I think that's probably the only problem with that bag. Um, but, um, yeah, giving it away to somebody, that's a great giveaway. That's a great giveaway. Um, yeah, the question I have another one. Is I have one of, of uh, no, no, you're, you've robbed all the swag out of it. Well, because I didn't think about giving it away until afterwards because I used it for a little bit, but I have, um, and I have all the swag in a bag. So, I mean, I can put it all back in there, uh, to be honest, but it's, um, I wanted to use it for a little bit, especially starting my sponsorship with uh Vito and stuff. Uh, and I love the bag, but I literally, I have an everyday book bag that I've been using forever and I'm just so used to it. It's been awkward changing. You know what I mean? For sure. Well, the veto bags are very rigid, right? Whereas a typical backpack's very soft and forms to, you know, you're, where you're hanging low over your tailbone or whatever, right? Where the veto bags doesn't, it, you can feel it hitting like your, your lower back, like it's rigid. Yeah. So there's definitely pros and cons to it for sure. Um, I enjoy it. I've been traveling with it ever since I've had it. And I've had mine since before the award show. Um, I've probably made, I don't know, maybe six uh, trips on airplanes with it. So um, I enjoy it, but it is, it is bulky. It is big and, but it holds everything too. So yeah, so they got space in it. So yeah, no. And I, and I love that. And it's not even the fact that it's bulky or rigid. It's just the other bag. It, it's this company. It's a brand called AER or something, but it's just, it's one of the best book bags I've ever had. And as far as my daily, you know, the things that I carry on me, like, I don't know, I guess I got so used to it that it just fits my needs. Um, so it's really about, you know, just that over what the, all, what this other all, bag can do. Right. All things are personal preference. So yeah, to eat, eat their own for sure. Yeah. Um, but I ended up getting another one. I have, um, uh, the camo one right here, obviously it doesn't have the awards thing on it, but, um, I picked that up when I was there. Uh, I pretty much got that stuff for pennies on the dollar. Plus I think now after the sponsorship, they're going to refund what I paid for it. Uh, but I have that one to give away as well, just because I know after the award show, so many people were like, I want that bag. I want that bag. And everybody's like, well, you're not getting my bag. But then I thought yeah. that's what got me thinking like, well, maybe I should give it away. You know what I mean? Like maybe well, they aren't cheap, man. I mean, they're, they're $300 backpacks, dude. It's, yeah. It's how much those things cost. But I will say everything that they put out, man, is just a quality, quality product. So we are, we're throwing some ideas around with Beto right now. And, um, you know, time will tell. That's all I can say about that. But um, exciting things. So I told him I wish they made a camera bag for uh, the influencers who carry camera gear. <laughs> Um, and it was funny because the lady was actually listening to me. She was like, huh? And I was like, I didn't think you really listened to me. I'm like, but yeah, I, I would buy that in a heartbeat. I would say they're very open to hearing what you have to say about new ideas. Um, doesn't mean that they're going to do anything with it. Right. But at least it's on their radar and they can discuss it with their, with their team and figure out what they want to do. Yeah. I'm supposed to be getting some other stuff from them. I know I just, I got you know, two things the other day, but apparently we're not allowed to talk about it yet. So, uh, <laughs> okay. mail too. Yeah. Um, cause at first I was like, what the, I was like, Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it's definitely neat. And, and like you said, that's, what's awesome. Like people realize when they see like the, um, you know, the sponsorships, they're, they're awesome. But all these sponsors, like I use all of these services, products, you know what I mean? Like I would, I've said something about every single one of these for free before I ever got paid. Um, and like last week, I don't know if you got to, to see it. I did. Um, it was a, a a favor for a friend who's been following the podcast forever. And um, 
It was the uh, Inferno Armor. It's a spray like that. So you, you it's kind of like the um, the cool gel, but it's to a whole nother level. Um, it, they started in racing. You know, it was supposed to be for their fireproof suits. They spray this stuff down and it won't catch fire. And how they tested it, the guy even did it live on the show, took a normal paper towel and sprayed it. Like didn't even like douse it. I mean, just like scoop, scoop, scoop. And then took a propane torch and put it up next to it and it won't catch fire. It was pretty wild. Um, so they're sending me a whole bunch of product and then they're trying to get into HVAC. And then the guy was like, um, I, I want to be one of your sponsors. And I was like, well, I'm not really accepting sponsors, man. I'm like, I kind of, I'm kind of full. Um, and he was like, well, I won't take no for an answer. Like, uh, tell me how we got to work this out. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, um, all right, I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. Great problem to have Gil. Great yeah. Problem. Yeah. Well, me and Adrian were just talking, um, off air and, uh, and uh, he was like, you know, I'm, you're not, you're not going to have enough screen uh, if you get any more um, sponsors. He's like, or it's going to be an hour long just doing sponsor reads. Um, but I, I really don't want, you know, my whole thing is to be, uh, be like five or six tops. Um, and if any more than that, then I'm just going to make those spots coveted. And then the value goes up, you know, people want them. So for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. I don't, I don't want, I don't want too many. Um, uh, I forgot. I was at the pinnacle of like sponsorships, right? And like what to go after, and like you've kind of mold, you kind of set the mold or the model for, hey, this is how it's done, right? Get a podcast, grow this thing, get sponsors on board. They pay a lot of money, and um, I mean, there's tons of guys out there who wish they were in your shoes for sure. So you're very fortunate, right? But it hasn't been without its effort and its challenges, right? And I mean, you've you paved the way, dude, but there's a lot of challenges that come with that. So, yeah. I mean, I, I did this for years making nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People don't see that though. Right. Yeah. So no, it's, and, and what I really want to do is I talk to a lot of these guys individual, but uh, when it comes to sponsorships and it's not hidden, I mean, I'll, I'll give the script that I use and how I've changed it. Um, but some of the other guys with shows uh, about having a closed you know, zoom call or something to try to help some of these guys, you know, give them advice, get started. Not, not just me, other people can, can do it as well. Um, but just to be able to help that, that community. So, um, you know, everybody can get their share, but also don't, don't try to think that you're going to get too much too soon. That's what I tell a lot of people. Like it takes, it takes a little bit of time. Um, it, trust me, just stay with the grind and, uh, it'll come, you know, like people see this now, which I, like you said, I am very fortunate, but this was years in the making. It didn't happen overnight. Yeah. It's people don't, well, it's like people see like, oh, this old guy got an overnight success story. No, he didn't. You just found out about the guy. You didn't see the last 10 years. This guy's been grinding to get this stuff done. You know what I mean? So you never, you didn't see the late nights. And the missed things with kids, right? And all this other stuff. It's it's challenging, man. I, I had to train myself. You know, it's easy when somebody sees something and then you go, oh, it must be nice, right? And I had to train myself to stop saying that because I know what it takes to grind day in and day out to be able to make something happen, right? So when you go, oh, you tell, see this guy, he's made it and he's successful and goes, oh, it must be nice to be able to take that vacation or must be nice to have that car or must be nice to be able to live in that neighborhood. Whatever the case may be, what you don't see is all of the late nights that this guy put in to be able to grind to get where he's going, right? So yeah, just keep that in mind next time you want to use that phrase, must be nice. Yeah, it's, you know, staying up when I remember when I used to... Uh, stay up till one, two o'clock in the morning, editing the podcast and they'd still sound like crap, but I was doing my best. I was watching YouTube videos, trying to learn how to edit, um, you know, until I was able to get an editor and then I fired him and did it myself again. But I learned a new, I learned a new process though. Um, but, uh, and I, I'm, I, this is one thing that I'm going to hold myself accountable and I know that you will hold me accountable. So I'm going to say this on this a year from now, when we're doing the HR 2025 recap, uh, I am going to have 
at minimum 50,000 followers on Instagram. And I am going to dedicate that that is going to be the minimum. All resources are going into that uh, and I'm going to make it happen. So it's going to be put up or shut up. And if I don't, I want everybody to, I'll, I'll do a live call where everybody can call in on the phone and, and give it to me to hold me accountable because th it's going to happen. No questions. It's going to happen. Well, I would love to say that I'll, I'll match you. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, man, like the, the followers are great. Um, I, I really stopped counting followers at probably around 15,000. Um, I just, it was, it did just kind of became non-important to me after that. Um, but before that, I mean, I was watching it like a hog. Oh man, we're almost there. Oh man, we're almost there. Right. Um, for me, man, a lot has changed over the last 12 to eight, probably the last 12 to 24 months in my personal life. And if you asked me two years ago what my definition definition of success was, it would be a completely 180 degree different answer than what I would give you today, right? I, I spent so many years chasing success and chasing money, and I found it at you know a reasonable rate. Um, but really, looking back, I, I had it completely wrong, right? And so, um, don't chase money, don't chase success. If you do things right money will chase you, you oh, know, yeah. chase you. And, um, man, I just, I had to get some things squared away in my life and, uh, you know, I had to get, had to get my walk right with my maker. And, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm more in a happy place than I ever have been in my entire life. And, um, I just have, I have a, a peace and a joy that I've never really had before that I've never been able to experience. And, uh, yeah. And I'm just happy, I'm just happy where I'm at. So, um, you know, and my goal now in life is to, you know, shine that light and show people that dude, it isn't about, I mean, yeah, you want to work hard. There's nothing wrong with working hard, right? In fact, it's, it's, it's a very good thing to work hard, but man, you got to find the balance. You don't get time back. Time's the only resource that you can't get back. Right. And uh, a lot of people who are really successful in life, a lot of them are unhappy and, um, you know, I would rather be, I'd rather be broke and happy than to be rich and just have freaking and hate life, you know, feel like I'm just missing something. Amen. So, uh, so for me, man, I, I've had to kind of learn it the hard way. I'm 42 years old. Um, but, uh, at the end of the day, man, you know, it's, um, this is what it took for me, right? That doesn't mean that that's going to be that way for everybody, but, um, I've had some amazing conversations with some people over the last several months. Um, life altering conversations, not just for myself, but for other people too. And, um, yeah, it's a great, great place to be for sure. For well, sure. I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you had that moment and you have that peace. And I am, I, I've been through so many ups and downs in my life. Most of my issues have been, you know, caused by myself. Um, you know, but, and I'm open and honest and I won't go into too many details about some things. Um, but you know, switching jobs, you know, when I worked for a company for a long time and then I came to Beltway, um, granted it's been one of the best decisions I ever made, but it was scary at the time. Um, and you know, obviously I have the stuff going on with my mom and then, you know, me and my wife, you know, I've been with this, she's my high school sweetheart. You know, I've been with her forever, but we had a very stressful relationship and it, it got to the point where we were almost like, I don't, we don't know if this is fixable, you know, like maybe like, yeah, we have kids in common, but right about now that's about it. And I had to, you know, I had to dig deep to find out, you know, uh, as a man, what, what I was going to do to, to make this because I don't want another woman. She's my wife. I want her. And, um, and now we've been amazing and we're still moving in the right direction, but we had to sit down and, you know, it's almost, we had to fall in love with each other all over again. You know, it, it's, and, it, and it's still happening, you know, like even like, like Valentine's day, me and my wife were, our, our wedding anniversary is January 25th, which is also the day my father passed. So that's been rough, but we never really celebrated Valentine's day, which happy Valentine's day to everybody. Um, because it's been, it's a political holiday. You know what I mean? It, it's for people who are single. 
Um, but you know, it was funny that we normally don't buy gifts, but I surprised her and got her something without her knowing. And she did the same thing, you know? So just those little things going back and forth again has been, has been amazing. So, and what's really, really helped me and you guys know, I don't go crazy. Ben, Ben already knows this it has been, um, you know, my, my spiritual battle and getting back on track has been life changing. And I, I am, you know, I still have a long ways to go. Um, but my, um, my faith and my religion has changed my life and something that I never in a million years thought that it would. Um, but it, it's been, it's been life changing. I mean, things that got put into my life, um, that I, I thank God every day that they did because it, it literally was life changing. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, I don't, I don't spend a lot of, gosh, dang it, this thing. Uh, a lot of people, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time talking about, you know, my faith and stuff like that. But, uh, my faith is, is now today, the most important thing that I got, you know, beyond my kids, beyond anything else. And I know you might be like, what the heck beyond your kids and go absolutely beyond my kids. And so, uh, my kids come in, my kids come in second. Right. But, um, yeah, man, my faith is super important. You know, I want to make sure that I'm living the life that I'm supposed to be living. And so if you go back six months, look at videos and, and stuff and the way that I'm conducting myself and talking and stuff is six months ago, you'll see that I'm a completely different person for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I started, um, I started a group chat on Instagram, um, with only, there's only a couple people in there. Uh, and I want to keep it small on purpose until we get the, until we get it figured out. But, you know, I just want to talk about faith, man, and encourage people and, and, uh, you know, hold each other accountable and just try to live, you know, try to live a better life, man. Um, especially when you get into a level of people looking up to you and, and wanting to try to be like you or asking you for advice and you're just living this, like, just this really raw life, you know? Um, there's a level of responsibility that comes with that, I think. So, so yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to live the best that I can live a clean life. Um, and I really don't even, I don't even really drink anymore. Um, and it's not because I'm trying to be like a goody two shoe or anything. I just feel like alcohol just doesn't serve me anymore. You know, I just don't have a desire for it. So, um, does that mean I'll never have a drink ever again? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. But, um, I know when I'm in a room full of people and everybody's drinking, I just don't have a desire to drink. So yeah, to each their own, you know? Yeah. I, I've never been a big drinker. Um, uh, I don't, a few beers every now and again. I think the most beers that I've drank in a long time was actually at the tactical awards only because those Miller lights were going down smooth. But, um, but normally I, I don't, I've never been a drinker and from somebody who has, you know, beat addiction, I don't like like altering uh, things because I don't like to not be in control. And when I say about like, you know, I, I don't smoke weed. So the only reason I did that, just so people understand the context of it is I have had trouble sleeping for years. And when I say this, I mean, I would get five, six hours sleep a week, you know, um, and it would take its toll on me. I would crash and I'd be no good to anybody. Um, and doctors wanted to give me, you know, uh, Ambien, Lunesta, these medicines that make me a zombie that I just did not want to take. So I started taking gummies to go to sleep, the, the weed gummies. And they've been amazing. It's legal now, so I don't have to feel bad doing it. And I get good night's sleep. It's It's been, it, that's been life changing for me. Um so obviously I didn't have them in Chicago. So I decided to smoke, which was a bad decision. It's totally different. Um, but that's the only thing that I, I really do with that. But it was funny. Me and Ben were talking like, I even think about, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I, I want to slow down and how much that, that I cuss for sure. I want to start moving in the right direction, but it's, it's sad that, Cause the way I've, I've grown up and, you know, I guess the military influence and stuff like that, that sometimes I cuss and don't even realize that I'm doing it. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. Tersh, what is up, brother? I didn't even see that. Um, uh, I'm assuming that's Tersh says service business mastery podcast. Um, yeah, so. for those who may be wondering, I actually challenged, <laughs> I challenged, uh, uh, Gil to 
not drop the f bomb through this whole thing, and I know it's been challenging for him. <laughs> I've been definitely thinking about my my words. Um, well, he said f bomb, but I've been trying to go through and not cuss at all, so I have not said a uh, curse word. Great, you know. So. Um, I might have to walk outside and smoke a cigarette after this, and I'll scream it really loud, but uh, <laughs> and then apologize. I'm in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Funny. But it's good. And to be honest, I love that because I'm going to say this, not to give you guys, you know, life advice, but if your friends, the people that you surround you with, if they are not doing things like what Ben just did to me, if they're not challenging you or trying to make you up your game or better yourself, you should get some new friends. I'm just being honest. I have some of my best friends that I've grown up with and we're still good friends, um, but I've kind of we're going in different directions. So, uh, it's awesome to have people that challenge you, will hold you accountable and, you know, help make you a better person, a better man, a better woman, whatever it is. Um, it, it's amazing. And I love that. Um, well, some, some people may think that your friends don't matter, right? It just, there's a story in the Bible where, um, they were trying to see Jesus and trying to get this guy healed there was no room. The, the crowd was so thick, right? So what his friends did is they carried him to the roof and they literally peeled the roof off this place and lowered him down into the building, right? And he was he was healed because of their fr- because of his friend's faith, not because of his faith, because of his friend's faith. So if he's going to get healed because of his friend's faith, your friends freaking matter, dude, right? So surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up, motivate you, push you, hold you accountable. And, uh, just make you a better person. And if you're still rolling around with, you know, your homies from high school and you're still doing the same stuff you were doing in high school, what are you doing, man? Yeah. What are you doing? And that's fine. If you want to live that life, go for it. Right. But then don't turn around in the same breath and complain that you're not getting out of life what you should be getting, or you're not where you want to be because dude, you're just not, you're just not doing it, you know, and nobody, you can't blame anybody else but yourself. So something to think your friends matter yes they do and i am fortunate and blessed to have the friends um and people close to me that i do and that's why i say most of my best friends or i don't even know what the definition of best friend is anymore but some of the people that i value the most i'll put it that way don't live in my state you know, there are people that I've met through the podcast that when something happens, I call them and uh, it's, hold on, what did Rookie say? That's why Gil and I are friends. He lost a bet. <laughs> Be quiet, Rookie. Uh, <laughs> if I lost a bet, you definitely made out in it then. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're over an hour, man. So I don't want to keep Ben too long. Um, do any of you guys have any questions about the award show or, um, anything tactical related, anything about that when it comes to, uh, HVAC tactical, what up, what up, Brett? I saw you in there, buddy. We were talking. So, um, Mr. Brett. So we got a couple, uh, tactical award winners in there with, uh, reliable Adrian, Brett, Lynn with Krauss, um, Mark two, you got it, buddy. That's where it's at. Yeah. Shooting through these comments here. Yeah. Yeah, man. The award show is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a behemoth, uh, all in its own thing. And, um, try to manage that in the magazine has been challenging, but you know, we're getting there, man. We're getting there. Yeah. A crew, Lake Superior. Nasty says HVAC crews on Lake Superior. I mean, hey man, I'm open to all options, right? Let's put some put some dollars to it and see what see what it looks like, and then we go from there. Um, the idea here is that we get sponsors to pay for everything. So um, a lot of these companies, man, they got a lot of money to spend, right? And uh, they spend it on a lot of times they spend it on stuff that they just always spend it on because they think that it always works. In reality, times have changed. Um, so. I mean, you're more likely to rep a brand. Sorry, dude. I got, I got somebody, somebody was, Angel was FaceTiming me. Um, wow. A lot of people who have rep a brand um, 
if they like, let's say you go hang out with, let's just say Navac, right? Navac throws this really cool party. You hang out. So you're like, man, these Navac people are cool, man. You know, and their tools are actually cooler than I thought they were. Right. So now all of a sudden you're more likely to rep that brand. And now you're an advocate for the, for the brand, um, as opposed to just, Oh, my friend has that, you know, it looks cool or whatever. Or yeah, I talked to those guys at the show, or whatever. So yeah, the people, some, you know, Go ahead. I rep- Go ahead. I said, what did you say? Um, you know, and, and it's the people, like all the sponsors that I have, like, um, obviously besides like Vito being the new one, you know, I haven't dealt with Mel that long, but you know, all my other ones, like, you know, the people from the top down, like I love supporting it because of the product or the service. And then the people behind it, it makes it more than, you know, just, Hey, buy this. You should spend your money here and blah, blah, blah. It, it's, it's a whole big, big thing that I, that I, I enjoy. I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, oops, I just lost the comments. Somebody asked when clearing a room, where am I in the, on the team? Um, that's a great question. I would be wherever I best fit the team. If that's being guy number one, I'm guy number one. I have no problem clearing a room, dude. No. Yeah, no, not at Mike, all. I hear it on my phone, so I don't know what happened here. Oh, there they go. Um, I'm just trying to see what else I got here. A tactical party at Krause's house. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, he's in Florida. You got to move all of his Milwaukee pack outs out of the way, but we can make it work. Well, I'll take those off your hands for you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. I got you, boo. <laughs> uh it's funny um one thing that i love say, so uh i love the evolution of it um you know of even what it's been since me and you have have met obviously the award show has come on since then um you know uh seeing all of the people that the the newer influencers the newer and from a podcaster um you know, one of the guys considered one of the OGs, like seeing the guys now, like all these new shows coming up and then just thinking about it, like five years from now, how it's going to be. So one of my plans is going to be to help people get these podcasts going. So, um, that's already in the works. We'll see how that works out. I don't want to say anything, but, um, kind of like a production company almost, but I want to help people, uh, do that. And I, I love hearing all these different things, man. I think it's amazing that people are doing more people are popping up and it's not like me versus you, you versus me. Cause we're all trying to, you know, help the same thing. Yeah. We're a team, dude. We all have to move together. And the, the more we move together, the further we move together. Right. So, um, yeah, it's not a, what can I get out of this and then kind of crap on everybody else thing. So we have, we have to work together as a unit for sure. Um, because once the community gets broken up, dude, the power that the community has is gone. Right. So, um, all the reason all these sponsors <clears throat> show up to the show and the reason all these sponsors are all over everybody for, from an influencer standpoint is because they're part of the community. This community is so strong and so big when that, when that's gone, it's gone. So Sponsors are gone. The money's gone. The show is gone. So, you know, we got to, we got to keep building the community and keep bringing new people in. And quite honestly, like this community and what we're doing, it, it's attracting these young people into the trade and they're going, dude, HVAC is cool, bro. Like yeah. we, we want to go do this. Right. So, and what makes it cool is dude, HR is a hot thing, dude. Right all the podcasts and all the Instagram stuff and the YouTube stuff and the award show and the magazine, like all this stuff makes the trade attractive to people. And so we just have to keep doing things that are so different and outside of the box. And it's going to attract new young talent into the, into the workforce here. Um, you know, we'll see what happens, but can't, it's got, it takes consistency. You can't give up. Yeah, no, no, you, you definitely can't. And it's, um, well, I, I had a missed call from uh, Vega today. I didn't know what the the number, to be honest, I have a friend who moved away who lives in Colorado and I thought it was him. Um, but um, 
that's awesome. I, I love, I mean, and I don't, I don't know what the phone call was for. Um, even if it's just to come on and do the podcast, that would be, that would be amazing. Um, but you know, meeting new people and even somebody like me, who's, uh, you know, I, I was established before the award started, but I still got to meet so many more amazing people because of the award show. Um, you know, whether it's friends and other influencers, or if it is other, um, uh, you know, sponsors or potential deals or whatever. Um, it, it's been, it's been an awesome Avenue. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, the, the networking ability with all of us, there's so much knowledge. Like at the award show, there's so much knowledge in that one room. It's ridiculous, man. So much knowledge, so much wisdom, so much life experience. But if you show up with an ego, you're going to miss it all. Right. So you got to show up with your pride laid down be willing to talk to people, be willing to take advice. And here's probably one of my biggest gripes with the new generation, especially like on TikTok, right? Is you get an old, older guy who notices that you're doing something wrong, right? And then reaches out to you to try to talk to you about it. And then you just say things like, Hey man, you got your way and I got mine. Right. It's like, dude, you're 22 years old. First of all, shut your mouth and listen. Right. Like these old guys have something to offer you. Does that mean that it's always going to be something uh, that's, that's of value or because these old guys have a lot of bad habits too. Right. But reality is, is that they have something to offer. And I think that these younger guys just need to, and girls just need to slow your roll. Right. We've been doing this a lot longer than you. We know a little bit more than you. You got to lay that ego down and lay that pride down um, and at least be willing to have a conversation. Don't just cut it off with, you know, you do your thing and I'll do mine or you do it your way and I'll do it mine. It's like, no, there's actually a pretty industry standard way to do that. It's not about my way or your way. It's about the right way. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, but that's my, that's my gripe with the young generation right now. Yeah, and, and the people that are starting influencing, whether you're podcasting, uh, YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever you're doing is don't have the drug addict mentality. Don't have the instant gratification. Um, you know, keep putting in the work and trust me, that hard work will, will pay off. Um, you know, yeah, I have the podcast, but when you look at me on so like social media, besides Facebook, like I don't, you know, I don't have some huge, huge following. Um, uh, but I, I want it because I would like to not be so reliant on the downloads you know, going back to what I said earlier about the follows followers. And also I don't want to be so reliant on Facebook because I really, as far as my group, I, I really hate the platform. Um, I don't like the negativity, um, but I can't really, I can't ax it yet. But if I had a 50 or, or something on an Instagram, then it's like, I don't have to necessarily worry about this. So that, that was my, you know, thought behind it. Um, we need to change the show from uncensored to HVAC censored. Oh, be quiet, rookie. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I, I won't keep any longer, man. We've been, this is the second show that I've went way over an hour. Um, but, uh, you know, I appreciate you, brother. I, I appreciate your friendship, man. Um, I thank God every day for when he put you in my life. And now the journey just keeps going and, you know, um, the friendship just keeps growing and growing and growing. And I also appreciate for all of us, the tactical awards is fun. We look forward to it. It's an amazing time, but for you, it's a stressful, a lot of work that takes almost the whole year that you don't necessarily get the, the chance to enjoy like we do. So the sacrifices you make have created a movement and it's, I thank you for doing that because it's, I look forward to it every year. Well, I appreciate that, man. It's, um, it's a lot of work. So I appreciate that you appreciate it for sure. So it's, um, I know I don't do it for me. I do it for the community. I do it because, you know, I know what it's like to, not feel appreciated and not feel like my craftsmanship has been honored in a way. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to do my part to try to honor people where honor is due, man. So, so I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And you see Tersh. Yeah. I love that Tersh, is man. the man. 
Yep. I'm a better person because of knowing him. And I feel that way about both of them. And Tersh is Tersh as well. Um, uh, the feeling is mutual, Tersh. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> um, and uh, just to, to end this, I would be, we can work our way up to a cruise. I'd be fine picking a random state and getting the biggest Airbnb we could find and having like a three, four day weekend with just a bunch of, a bunch of influencers, trade people, whatever. I feel like that would be a blast. And some of the content created in that house would be gold. Are you into Supercross at all? Dirt bikes? I can be. <laughs> uh, um, well, it, yes and no. I mean, I don't want to lie. I mean, I've, um, I'm from the home of Travis Pastrana, um, and his, his, uh, aunt and uncle babysit me when I was little. So, um, so yeah, yes and no. Like I know what I'm talking about it, but talking about possibly doing something at like the, uh, supercross race that happens in New Jersey and, um, maybe getting like a, they have like these little suites there and, uh, you know, you can hold like 16 people or something like that. That's what we did in, in Phoenix. Uh, my buddy did that and, uh, you know, everybody pays their fair share to be in there and, um, you know, but if we can get a sponsor to cover a majority of the cost, it just makes it super affordable and you get your little, little suite in there with your own food and your own drinks and stuff like that. It's just a really good time to hang out. You still get to watch the races, uh, but you're just got this little kind of private little suite. It's, it's really cool. So, yeah, no, I, I definitely be, be down for that. Um, cause uh, I'm definitely going to start doing some local things. Don't worry, blogger. Um, uh, my house stuff is almost sealed. Um, I, I have a feeling that I'm going to get one of these. And once that process is done, um, I'm going to have, I'm going to local things are going to start quickly. Um, so, um, Tersh said, count him in. I'm down for some super crawls. We need to do it at Tersh's house. He's the one that lives out there on the, like acres of property and stuff like that. We don't you know, get lost in the woods or something. Stop holding out on us, Tersh. We need to have it at your house. You can do that too. <laughs> in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. Um, but let me end this. Uh, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on. Like I said, thank you for what you do and, um, keep rocking and rolling. And we'll, I guess, uh, a bunch of us together, um, with your lead, will keep changing this, uh, this industry one day at a time. I appreciate that, man. We'll chat soon. Yep. Have a good night, buddy. See you guys. Oh, let me, what am I doing? I'm gonna switch this around mirror. They're not working here. There we go. Anyway, man, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this. I always love sitting, talking to Ben. Um, and maybe some of you that don't get to go, like I know people that have won awards or people that have been to the awards show can really understand the mag magnitude of what it is, whether you win an award or not. Um, it's, it's just, it, it's an, it's an amazing time like as somebody that has been podcasting for you know almost eight something years i mean tersh has been you know 10 years you know he's been longer than me um it's to see i we're in, as an industry as a trade we're in a good place and things like the award show um have pushed it in that direction and it's just awesome to see that we went from people that you know wouldn't help you know, people they worked with because they were, you know, I don't want to show that guy something because they might take my job to now all of a sudden, you know, people wanting to show their work and show how good they are and lifting each other up and wanting to meet people and stuff like that. Like it, it's a positive thing and moving in the right direction. So I'm, I'm happy, happy to see it. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Tersh knows, man. That's why I'll be honest, like me winning my tactical award was absolutely amazing. Uh, I was shocked. I really was. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. I'm so happy that I got to win it. But this year being able to hand the award to Tersh, um, and Josh as well, but I'm, I mean, you know, obviously I've been closer with Tersh, but be able to hand it to him, uh, meant almost as much to me, if not more than getting the award myself. Um, so that's the other thing, seeing your friends, uh, you know, get what they, you know, I hate, I hate using the word deserve, but, um, you know, being able to win that award and have their moment per se. So, um, but I'm not going to keep everybody, um, 
I love you too, brother. I appreciate you, man. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I'll text you Terrence, but I want you to, know I didn't forget about you, man. I, uh, this new house, man, I've, I've been having to move money around all over the place cause it's costing more than I thought. And I got to put a lot more cash down than I thought, but, um, thank all of you for being here, man. I really appreciate you. Um, I know I see a lot of the same people for, uh, most of the time, but I know that I can't always do it. But try to support the other shows. I know a bunch of them are in here, but make sure you're uh, report uh, supporting. You know, Brett, the Advanced Refrigeration Podcast, amazing podcast. He's a super smart dude that gives you amazing technical information, but it's also funny and enjoyable to listen to. Um, you know, Reliable HVACR. He has his own podcast. Plus, he has the HVAC Nights podcast that he does with uh, you know uh, Kraus. And, uh, I, uh, man, I'm sorry. Uh, HVAC guy. And I can't think of his name. I'm sorry. Um, that's pretty bad that I just thought about that. Um, the misfits podcast. I mean, I can go on and on, you know, HVAC overtime. Like there's a bunch of shows, Kurt Curtis. That's it. I'm so sorry. I, I had a brain fart, but, um, there's just there's shows every night, man. Like support all these people trying to do all this amazing stuff, man. Um, that's why you'll see me a lot of times. I don't necessarily have time to come in and do the whole show, but I want to hop in say hello, let them know that I appreciate them. I love what they're doing and I support them. Um, you know, so do that, support the whole, the whole community. But, uh, with that being said, I'm gonna start running my mouth cause we're, we're, we're way too, way too late. Um, thank you all for being here. Remember to, um, uh, I've been literally looking at houses every night. So that's why some of my giveaways have been delayed, but I have a, buttload of stuff to give away so please make sure you're followed um you're following me it's it's instagram not really so much tiktok um you can follow me there but it's going to be instagram uh facebook the actual business page so hvac uncensored podcast or right here on youtube so make sure you are subbed or followed in those spots so that you stay up to date because i want the people that are here every week and support me to be able to win these amazing prizes that i have to give away um just don't give away your butt huh um anyway guys remember uh be safe out there we all got somebody to make it home to um i always say keep your head on the swivel drive in the breakers turned off uh walking past that piece of metal, uh, whatever it is, just be safe. Uh, I want all of you to make it home the same way that you leave every morning in one piece and intact. Do the little things, man. Set yourself apart from the next guy or girl. Um, help give back to the industry. I don't care what you know. You know something to be able to help the next person um, and make yourself better at the same time. It's so amazing how when you help another person grow, you're growing yourself. Uh, when I started training people, it made me so much better technically uh, than I thought it ever would. You know, it's it's always been a two-way street, and I am forever grateful for that. Um, care about people, you know? Just give a damn and, you know, ask people how their day is and just affect somebody's life in a positive way every single day. And it, it's amazing how things will just – it things brighten up for you. It, it's just – that's the easiest way I could say it. Um, but – with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you in here. Um, I hope that all of you have a great week. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. And uh, I will talk at you mofos next week, man. All right. See ya. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now, get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests. For the record, Ben, if you're listening, that was the audio tape that cussed. That wasn't me. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that um, in the background. Uh, I want to say this real fast as I'm closing out. Each and every one of you, especially you guys that know me personally, you have my cell phone number. If you ever need me to talk about personal stuff, whatever it is, please know that my phone is always on. All right. If I, God forbid you call me and I can't talk, then I'll tell you that I got to call you back. But please, um, I encourage you, if any of you 
ever need somebody to talk to and have somebody to call, please don't be afraid to call me. My phone is always on. All right. So I've talked to quite a few people in the last week and it's been nothing to do with HVAC or the podcast. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, if you need somebody to talk to, my phone's always on. All right. Love you guys. Have a great day. See you.